Here's a problem talking about the motion of a car with a constant deceleration. Because we're talking about an acceleration that's constant, that means we can use our formulas, our equations, for constant acceleration, which I've already written in this little box to the left here. The givens that the problem tells us are the acceleration, uh, a deceleration of 4.92 meters per second squared. So because it's a deceleration, it might help to treat that as negative, um, depending on our coordinate system, of course. We're given the car's initial velocity and its final velocity. Our initial velocity is 24.6 meters per second, and our final velocity would be zero, since the problem is talking about a situation in which the car is slowing down until it stops. Now part A of the problem asks about how long it takes. So this means that part A is asking about time. So I'm going to choose this first equation, V equals V naught plus AT, since that includes all three of our unknowns and also has t, the time variable, which is what we want to find. So to solve this problem, part a of it, we'll, want to we'll first want to take that formula and solve it for t. We want to get the t on its own, so the first thing I'm going to do is subtract both sides of the equation by v0, like this. We still want to, now we have got the term containing the t on its own, but we still need to get the t itself on its own. So we can get the t on its own by dividing both sides of the equation by a, so that the acceleration cancels out on one side, and then we're just left with a formula telling us that t is equal to v minus v naught divided by a. Now we're ready to plug this into our calculator. So of course, the initial velocity is 24.6 meters per second, so that's what we'll plug in for v naught. But since the car is stopping, this v here is going to turn into is going to become a zero. So this top term is negative. The acceleration will also be written as negative, so negative 4.92 meters per second squared. If you put this into your calculator, you find that the time value is about 5.00 seconds. So it takes five seconds for the car to slow down. Part B is now asking about how far the car travels. Since we now have every variable other than the distance, thanks to the previous part, we can use any of these equations to solve it. Well, rather, any of the, the latter two, since they're the ones that actually contain the, the, the x variable. But I'll go with the third one, the v squared formula, because that's the one you would want to use if you were to decide to do part b first. We'll want to algebraically solve this for delta x. So the first thing we'll want to do, once again, is get the term containing the variable we want to find on its own. And we can do that by subtracting both sides of the equation by v naught squared to get the 2a delta x on its own. And now the next step is going to be actually getting the delta x on its own, which we can do by dividing both sides of the equation by 2a. So we're left with an equation telling us that the change in the car's position is equal to v squared minus v naught squared divided by 2a. And now we'll just have to plug in our values again once more. So once again, the car's final velocity is zero since it's coming to rest. The initial velocity, which we're squaring, we'll just use 24.6 meters per second. And then for the acceleration, we'll once again use negative 4.92 meters per second squared. And if you plug this in, then you get a position or a change in position of 61.5 meters. Part C is now asking us about graphs. Graphs of x versus t and graphs of v versus t. Both of these graphs are easy enough to find and estimate uh, if you have a graphing calculator because then you can plug the functions in to get those. I've got some images here of what those graphs might look like. The one on the left is for position and we can get that by taking our second kinematics equation, the one for delta x in terms of t, and of course plugging in the problem's given values for um, the other constants in here. But t will have to be our independent variable, of course. The one on the right is for v versus t, which we can get using this top equation here, since that gives us v using t as the independent variable. So that's what these graphs might want to look like. 
That's all for this video. I hope it helped you out. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you'd like to make a request for, future, for problems for me to make in the future, or concepts you'd like me to make videos on, I've got a Discord server down below where you can contact me. Anyone is welcome. But that's all for now, so I hope you all have a lovely night. Bye-bye.